I wish I'd never watched that video. I thought I'd grow out of shit like that by the time I'd hit 20. Yet there I was, off my tits on some choice MDMA Jeff hooked us up with. Turning through some kind of hardcore sadomasochism site. The kind of videos you're surprised aren't on the dark web. If you ever stumbled across the Pain Olympics or 4chan you'll know what I'm talking about. When I was a teenager mates and I would gather round a PC screen. Playing chicken to see who could watch the most extreme content without leaving the room or puking. This was like that, but with a tablet, and nobody is sober. In my defense it wasn't my idea. Luke's cousin was down for the weekend. Young lad, about 16 I think. Not too bright, but kept himself to himself. Which meant he wasn't going to get us caught sneaking him into the rave underage. As usual, afterwards we found ourselves at a flat party, and then in Luke's bedroom. It wasn't until about 4 am, when those who were able had sauntered off to get laid, that the usual rounds of spliff and internet began. This was when Luke's cousin started suggesting weirder and weirder shit. We all thought at first that it was just a Mandy. He was young after all, and teenage desire to be seen as edgy mixed with calm down anxiety was a plausible explanation. After a while though, one of us, I was too fucked to remember who, but I hope it wasn't me, started to entertain his suggestions. Everybody there enjoyed horror films after all. We had more than one forum saw our hostile marathon after a night out. What was the harm? Soon enough we found ourselves at the familiar group cringe and... There was then, of course, the unending debate over whatever macabre footage we just put ourselves through was real. Luke's cousin was in control by that point. We hadn't noticed how quiet he'd gotten. He sat there on the floor, legs crossed. Leaning forward every so often to click the next video. Had this look on his face the whole time, like he was searching for something specific. He never skipped anything though. No matter what the video showed he just sat back, watching whatever it was making the rest of us make melodramatic retching noises unfold. Once one video finished he scoured the algorithm suggestions for the next. He'd ignored all of ours by this point, so we'd stopped bothering. We were more than a few blunts into our session, and holding our focus on anything other than the rich conversation about which of the girls we knew would be a good smash was difficult. I remember him sighing disappointedly at every video he found, except for the last. When he found that one he licked his lips, rocking slightly. He must have known. No way the creepy little fuck found it by accident. When he clicked play we all knew this one was going to be different. I'm not sure how. Call if instinct. Something was off about it, which when you consider the kind of website we were surfing said a lot. Before the footage started the rest of us had been laughing and joking in a blunt smoked haze. The vibe of the room switched in less than a heartbeat. The moment sound started to seep from the tinny speaker, every chemically stimulated mind enraptured by the figure on the 12-inch tablet screen. It was a girl. Younger than us, but older than Luke's cousin. Pretty, but not in the conventional sense. I say pretty because she wasn't exactly hot. Not the kind of looks you try and buy a drink. She had a pleasantness to the eye that I can't really put in words. To describe her would make her sound plain, almost ugly, drooping cheeks, large eyes surrounded by makeup done a little too much, lipstick ever so just the wrong shade of red. Hair that had been brushed but was in obvious need of a wash. Not the sort of girl I'd give a second or third look under any other circumstance. In that smoky room she was all I could think about. The first two minutes of footage were her staring at the camera in front of a grey wall. The shot was well lit, and the camera was expensive, all the lines and imperfections of her face were visible. Her mic was clearly pricey, too. 
When she finally parted her lips the sound of them peeling apart was quite audible. The breaths between her words came through as though she were in the room with us. She talked for a whole five minutes before anything interesting happened. I don't know when the lads had last focused on something for that long at that time in the morning. Maybe never. Luke, Hunt, Jack, Lyle, and I, all sat on the mattress and beanbags, hypnotized by the movement of her puff lips, whispering semi-nonsense at us. She spoke a lot about necessity and excess, about evolution and optimization, deconstruction and renewal. Subjects that didn't really seem to be linked to me at the time. It goes without saying I understand it all now, but then it just came across as meaningless word salad. It didn't matter. I would have listened to that face read even something as dull as the Bible for 500 years if given the chance. She said her last words and held up a potato peeler. I didn't think much of it. I was too lost in those dark eyes of hers. She asked us all to remember that everything we do is to achieve perfection. Something like that, at least. The exact phrasing doesn't matter, it's the idea that counts. Perfection. The room, with the exception of Luke's cousin, jumped in unison when the footage cut to black. The switch was accompanied with a loud crash, the sound of something heavy landing on the lowest notes of a grand piano. You can try this at home. The words appeared letter by letter in a white typewriter font. Sporadic detune piano notes played over the scrolling text, along with muffled grunts and the scraping bangs of God knows what being dragged across the floor. The hair on my arms stood on end. I wasn't grinning and laughing anymore. I was still high, but barely. From the quick glances I exchanged with the rest of the lads I could tell they were in a similar state. Everybody except Luke's cousin, of course. The camera had been moved about 10 feet away from the woman. For some reason this didn't affect the definition of her face. The wrinkles of her top lip, the poorly concealed spot on her nostril, the blobs left over from over generous application of eyeliner and mascara, all were just as clear as when she had been a few inches from the screen. She wasn't smiling anymore. Her drooping cheeks were slick with tears, and they wobbled in time with the trembling of her jaw. Her large eyes stared into the camera, into us, pleading for help both sides of the screen knew wasn't coming. She was still holding the potato peeler next to her head. Unlike her bottom lip, her grip was steady. We could see her clothes now, too. She was wearing a skirted suit. And an expensive one at that. My plan for after uni was to go into banking. I'm versed enough in tailoring to recognize quality fabric when I see it. The sobbing woman had on the uniform of the financially successful. The men stood either side of her were naked. They were each a few feet taller than her. An impressive feat, since even though she was sat down, you could tell the woman was tall. The length of her slender legs was a testament to this. How their stubby legs supported their weight was a mystery to me. The hanging belly flap almost touched the floor. Their skin shone with grease, sweat and dirt. And were it not for the fact I knew it's impossible, I would have sworn under oath that I could smell the pungent odor of curdled milk whenever I looked at either of them for too long. The one to her left was holding a transparent bucket filled with a clear liquid that I hoped was water. To her right was a silver tray. I can't comment on what the men looked like. I couldn't see their faces through the orange shopping bags over their heads. The cheap plastic was fastened in place with about a half dozen zip ties round each man's neck. The crinkled skin pulled so taut that the shapes of their faces were visible. A pair of orange-bound skulls on the peaks of twin mountains of glistening flesh. The only movement from either was the steady in out of the bag being pushed and pulled by labored breaths. The letters didn't scroll out one by one this time, 
but appeared as a single block. They only hanged around for about half a second before the video took us back to the dusty floorboards. Grey Wool, Sobbing Girl, and her hulking guardians. Except, she wasn't sobbing anymore. She wasn't smiling either. Even though her gaze was directly into the camera, her expression was blank. Still laced with an unexplainable magnetism, but the Perkins spark from the segment where she spoke to us was gone. She raised the potato peeler in front of her face. Before I knew what was happening she dragged the blade down in a single uninterrupted motion. She didn't wince, didn't flinch, didn't register in any way the sharp metal slicing through the bridge of her nose. The removed flesh rolled itself into a damp curl as she peeled. It fell to the ground with a wet splat that was far too loud for comfort. Scarlet gushes joined the streaks of dark makeup her earlier tears had dislodged. Pale bone was visible in the wound. The button tip of her nose hung on a thread from where the peeler had found its way too deep, and she had to yank it out. The blood pulled at the dangling chunk, dripping on her expensive skirt. She didn't even blink. Someone threw up. I could smell it, although the sounds of the hurling felt like they came from some other world. I was lost in the woman on the screen. I couldn't look away, and I didn't mean that my curiosity got the better of me. I was actively trying, putting so much strain into turning my head that veins on my neck began to bulge. My eyes dropped. The tiny muscles used to move them left and right screamed, threatening to tear from the force I put on them. Didn't work. I was helpless, sat on the dirty carpet, unable to stop watching as she dragged and dragged the gleaming metal. On occasion the blade would get clogged. When this happened she would reach into the bucket, whisking the utensil around to remove the debris. Clouds of red bloomed in the water. The whole time her expression stayed unresponsive to the curls of skin piling up on the floor, the crimson wetness that consumed the lower half of her face, the open holes where her nostrils used to be. She should have screamed, but didn't. Part of me knew it was more accurate to say she couldn't. That part of me was the one that wanted to scream too. I was paralyzed, paralyzed and terrified. No matter how much strength of will I mustered, I couldn't turn my head away from the screen, couldn't shut my eyes, couldn't focus on anything other than the scraping of the peeler. Adrenaline and panic took over my mind. My body though, my body seemed to be getting different messages from the girl shearing off her own nose slice by slice. To my absolute disgust, I had pitched a tent. I had never felt uglier, more repulsive, in my life. I'm not a psycho, or a pervert. I'm not. All I wanted to do was not watch. The footage must have tapped into something deep, some latent human infatuation with violence in all of us. That's the only explanation, surely. It's not like a video could hijack your body. Ah, beauty, such minimalism the piano crash was louder this time, closer to the microphone. Again the words only last about half a second. When the trio returned, the small nub of exposed bone was gone. A triangle of open flesh lay at the center of the woman's face, her nose now in wet spirals on her lap and around her feet. The cheeks were next. It was around the time that teeth started to be exposed that I hurled. The entrapment was so strong by this point I could no longer steal quick glances at the boys, but I could hear many of them doing the same. It was a struggle getting the vomit out. I couldn't bend over far enough due to the paralysis, and had to cough it out mouthful by burning mouthful. One of them was laying on their back when the video started. I could tell by the gargled crying that it was Hunt. I felt a tear fall down my cheek, unable to look away from the woman peeling her lower jaw down to the bone as the wails behind me coughed into drowned silence. Somebody managed to get out an almost inaudible whimper. Even though my vision was blurred with tears, I could still make out the half-skeleton in the video. 
I watched the screen, spitting up the occasional chunk of regurgitated kebab meat, as the blurred figure reached to her right. The woman took two objects from the silver tray that I couldn't quite make out. The orange-headed blob next to her didn't move, but even through the watery haze I could still just about make out the steady rhythm of its breath beneath the bag. For the first time in my life I was happy to be crying. The weakness in character put up a partial shield, blurring, and censoring whatever I was about to see once the woman had positioned the objects next to her dripping half-face. You will watch. The crashing came from behind, the unseen pianist slamming on the keys only a few feet away. Something forced me to blink, and I mean that in a very literal sense. It wasn't voluntary, it wasn't a reflex, it was done on command. A command from who, or what I didn't know. My eyes slammed shut, and were quickly wrenched open again by an indescribable and overbearing impulse. All traces of tears were gone. The video swam back into focus just in time, to catch the downward swing of the hammer. Exposed jawbone swing outwards, the chisel following through and digging itself in the underside of the lolling tongue. The limp muscle fell to her throat with a wet slap, hanging there behind the dangling jaw for all to see. The girl was calm when she placed the tools in her lap and reached up for the partially detached bone. Her expression didn't change when she tweaked it loose, discarding her own jaw on the floor with the skin peelings, as though she had just picked a scab. On top of everything else, the stiffness in my jeans hadn't subsided. Were my stomach not empty I would have vomited again, as much from self-disgust as the nightmare Luke's cousin had pulled me into. See what she gives for you, she removes all but the most necessary features. The unseen penis was closer now, but what concentration I still had was focused on Luke's cousin. I could just about see him out of the corner of my eye. He was blinking. I noticed that straight away, because I couldn't unless ordered to. Laying on the floor, less than 10 inches from the screen, his young face was illuminated a ghostly blue by the light from the tablet. I couldn't pull my attention on him much, the video wouldn't allow it, but I could have sworn he managed to shoot the occasional gleeful glance at the rest of us. I was able to notice him enough, to see how his white grin didn't falter, how the joy in his adolescent eyes didn't fade as the woman on screen reached towards her own with a steel ice cream scoop. My own eyes burned with each steady flick of the woman's wrists. My eyelids howled at me fighting a losing war to close themselves, trying even though it was hopeless to shield my mind from the sight of those bloodied once white orbs plopping to the ground. I had to cough down empty heaves, when the second one rolled towards the camera, the fading pupil locked on my own. It was judging me, and I knew why. The reason I nearly choked on my own vomit wasn't just because of the footage though. The disgust was far more at my own body than at anything the video forced me to watch the girl do to hers. I could feel the wetness in my boxers the moment that first eye squelched on the floorboards. Every spasm haunted me, every muscular convulsion scarring me for life. Outside of the nightmare, before it, I had earned the half-joking nickname of Big Shagger on campus. I'd never hated myself for it before now. It wasn't until the girl started removing the skin of her brow like a face mask that the twitching stopped. My brain must have worked out that shutting my eyes wasn't going to happen. My extremities went numb, the heavy knot in my stomach became a rising lightness, an unpleasant floating sensation that nights of being blackout drunk had left me all too familiar with. The room spinned one way, my insides another. The space behind my eyes prickled. I could feel myself slipping into a blissful unconsciousness. I urged the process on. I was desperate to be out of the nightmare, and if passing out was the only way then so be it. The hand had other ideas. She obliges, she obeys, she complies, this is all for you, I could feel the clammy grip on the back of my head. The fingers worked their way through my hair, pulling and tugging to make sure I had no respite from my own depraved nature. Every time my head lulled forwards it would be wrenched back, the fog of unconsciousness fanned away again and again. I could hear sobs and whimpers from every direction every direction that is except where Luke's cousin sat. I could feel his grin, the cracks of his laughter flecking my wet face. 
the hanging smoke in the air, that stodgy scent of cheap weed, and even cheaper cigarettes, grew thicker by the second. It snaked through my mouth and nostrils, coating the inside of my lungs with heavy phlegm, that left my breathing like that of a drowning man. I gagged for a final time, blood and bile spewing onto the already vomit-sodden carpet. Perfection, the crashing in my ear canal timed itself perfectly with the moment the woman grasped her own hair and pulled. The scowl came clean off, the fluid motion leaving a glistening skull caked in chunks of red and purple. The text came just as my brain had time to process the final masterpiece. The girl stood tall, proud even, with the two sweating mountains of fat either side of her, the plastic of the bags on their heads still moving with that slow in out rhythm. The floorboards they stood on were washed with blood, a pile of fleshy curls at the woman's high heels, a single eye staring at the camera on top of it. Perfection. The words sliced through the crystal image. My dick recoiled the instant it was cut off from the shaved half-face. To my shock and self-hatred, I was wincing from the sudden removal of the eyeless stare, the tongue lolling free on a jawless neck. My head swam, joints ached, eyes burned. Yet through the taste of vomit and heaving of raw lungs only one thought crossed my mind. Perfection. As soon as I could move I didn't hesitate. I heard shouting behind me as I slammed the door, Luke and his cousin at each other, Lyle calling Hunt's name over and over, Jack screeching incomprehensible gibberish. I didn't care. I booked it from Luke's room and out into the hallway without looking back. I don't really remember the journey to my end of the building very well. I remember taking off my clothes as I ran, throwing the vomit-crusted t-shirt and silk pants into the corridor. I left my phone, keys, wallet. I'm usually protective of the necessities, but in the wee hours of that morning they didn't matter. Nothing did, save for removing as much of what had transpired from myself as possible. People laughed when they saw me sprinting naked through the halls, but the laughter quickly turned to shrieks, and startled mutters as they came close enough, to see the blood and puke slathering my lips. Somehow I kicked down the door to my room. I'm not a strong guy. But desperation and adrenaline meant the old hinge gave way after two blows. Once sure the door was firmly barricaded by my wardrobe I screamed my way through an hour long shower. With the temperature up full the water scaled my skin, at one point leaving actual blisters on my forearms, but it wasn't hot enough. Neither was the bleach I grated in with a scouring pad from the kitchen. Once strips of reddish water started to drip from the end of my shame I gave up, collapsing into a sobbing heap on the tiles. When I woke, the shower was still on, but had long since run cold. I dragged myself into my bedroom, glad that the curtains were still closed. Once I remembered that I had lost my phone, my laptop informed me it was 17.30. I'd slept for about 13 hours. Usually I don't dream after a session, the spliffs and lines take care of that, but on the tiled floor my dreams had been vivid, more lucid than I had ever experienced. Perfection. The word rang and regurgitated over and over in real time, over half a day of formless contemplation of the meaning behind the word the revelatory film had instilled, has instilled, within me. Perfection. I checked Facebook, and awoke to a horde of messages. The lads had been busy whilst I slept. Luke had killed his cousin. About 10 minutes, after I had gone the argument turned into a fist fight, although from Lyle's punctuation free 1000 word long message, I could tell it was less of a fight and more of a murder. Before Lyle knew what to do, Luke had grabbed his cousin's head, smashing the grinning face into a mirror over and over again until the nose was flat, and shards of glass found their way through eyelids, and into grey matter. Hunt had choked on his own vomit, but that's no surprise. After killing his cousin Luke tried to rope Lyle and Jack into helping roll up both bodies in a duvet to dump somewhere. When Lyle refused, Luke had gone at him with a shard of glass. Jack was in no state to do anything, so Lyle grabbed him, and they both licked it. The status update at the top of my news feed let me know what happened to Luke once they'd gone. Charlotte, Luke's flatmate, was going to need therapy for a long time. Maybe forever. She was never one to shy away from details of her grievances online, and this time was no different. Her recollection of events would have been harrowing had it not been for my awakening. Upon barging through his door, to investigate strange noises she had found Luke, naked, kneeling on two face-down bodies. 
I imagine she didn't stick around long enough to find out who they were, or she had been told not to by the police she later mentioned had arrived, but I knew. He was laughing, crying, screaming, every emotion it was possible to feel. A shrieking monster surrounded by the dead and shards of bloodied mirror. The part that would truly disturb Charlotte, the part that would give her recurring nightmares, of what should have been any normal morning, was what he clenched in his hands and mouth. Three sets of severed male genitals. Judging by her capitalized paragraph, Luke had a large wound between his legs that confirmed one of them was his own. Perfection. Flicking my eyes back to the message told me things hadn't gone much better in Jack and Lyle's flat. They lived on the seventh floor, a fact that Lyle wasn't quick enough to stop Jack exploiting. To prevent exactly what Jack had been planning the large windows only opened a few inches. Lyle heard the glass smash, but was only able to kick the door through in time to catch the sight of Jack's ankles disappearing beyond the sill. By the time Lyle reached the window Jack was a red crater on the concrete. A quick glance outside my curtain showed me at least six pairs of flashing lights. The door supervisor was talking to a police officer, pointing up at my window. I knew what I had to do, but didn't have long to do it. Perfection. Moving the barricade, interrupting my flatmate's romantic dinner, ignoring their screams as I threw the fridge in front of the door, stabbing them until they made no more noise, finding the potato peeler at the back of the cupboard, all of these I found easy. I had purpose now. I made sure to add the bed to the wardrobe when resealing my bedroom door behind me. I needed time, a resource that the hammering on the door to the flat beyond the barricade told me I didn't have. I could hear somebody shouting my name. A deep male voice, human in a way that I soon would not be. Perfection. I grasped the potato peeler in my hand. My palms were sweating, but not from nerves. It was anticipation. No, not anticipation excitement. The same excitement I used to feel in that moment where a girl throws you down on her bed and unhooks her bra. The plastic pressed into my fingers felt realer than any woman I'd ever touched. I gazed at myself in the mirror. Bloodshot eyes, a hooked nose, lips dried out from too many cigarettes and late nights. All of it holding me back, all of it clouding my vision for so long. I didn't wince as the peeler made its first incision. I'm so glad I watched that fucking video. Perfection.